How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm yeah, going to do a review on this thing, the Jeep Wrangler. Obviously when you buy the pack there is two of them, uh, I've got the other one next to me here. I'm most likely just going to do a review on the Jeep Wrangler. I've got nothing against this one, the CJ7 Renegade or something, it's just that it tends to be yeah, a slightly just lesser version of the Jeep Wrangler to be honest, and they're probably going to be pretty similar. I will go and test it out, if there's that much of a difference I'll make a separate review, but for the most part yeah, it's probably just going to be this. Uh, engine wise it's good start S plus it's got the yeah 6.2 turbo thing I think that's what's in the uh, Hummer um, gearbox I'm definitely going freeway because it's just quicker out of all of them the suspension to be honest I tried them all uh, for the sake of this video I leave it in tuned custom the crawler was alright it was fine I have no issue with it I just didn't I don't know I, I could use either, either one if you know what I mean so it doesn't really uh, take your pick I the crawler says it's like independent suspension all the rest of it. I don't know, but it might have been a tad easier to roll the crawler. That's why I was happy just to stick with the uh, chin custom in the end. As far as tyres, it goes up to uh, 36 inches. They have actually got some like special OJ Simpson tyres at 32 or something. I don't know, you might find a bloody glove on the uh, rear seat, but they don't do them in a 36 for some reason. I'm mainly going to be sticking to the muds, but obviously they've got the chained on various snowy maps. That's what I'll be uh, putting on. I've got the autonomous winch, because then at least making this if I roll. Uh, engageable diffs. The spare wheel, to be honest, it's uh, yeah, it kind of suits it with it, so I'm going to leave it on. It doesn't cock block you from equipping trailers or anything. The snorkel, that one's the tallest. Kind of looks pretty cool anyway, and that's the one I'm going with. Uh, it has got a roof rack. I won't be using it for, I don't think, any of this video, really. Uh, I've drove around with a roof rack. I don't feel like it affects it like it used to some of the other um, vehicles. It's just, yeah, for the sake of this video, I just strip all the other stuff away and just see how the actual vehicle itself handles once you start adding other stuff. Obviously, that's up to you guys. Um, the rear bumper, in the end, I put this one on. I don't really... The thing I don't like already is it doesn't have a middle rear winch point, which I don't like. They're quite sort of wide, given that, yeah, it'd be nice if it just had a central one. Bits and bobs, put lights on the roof and stuff, but yeah, pretty standard issue. As far as front bumpers go, I think they all look nice. The stock one's pretty cool. It's just the only reason I went for this one in the end is it they all sit around the same height, but that one's just kind of pinched in at the corners, so you're less likely to clip it on the edge kind of thing. It looks like it's got some little fog lights kind of built in flush with the bumper, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. Got a little like ramming bar thing on the front and all that, so that's what I'm going for. This is just horns and then all the sidebars like where you'd step yeah like a step to step up it's just again if i'm climbing over stuff it's only now stuff that i can catch so leaving it all off is what i've chose uh two lots of alloys just like the uh ck 1500 and that and i think the hummer as well have just got the choice of them color wise uh looks pretty cool and usual like the black gray and white and um, the the colors actually are not too bad i um this one yeah like white with the no stickers or whatever I actually quite like in the end I went for the red one in the end the greens are right the blues are right the blacks pretty nice as well I just that's quite a nice bright vibrant red it was close I nearly kept the white one but then I stuck that on uh, it looks why well, I think it looks pretty cool we've got jeeps and that over here and yeah I just I don't know in a nutshell they're just I think of them like an American Land Rover Defender kind of thing really so yeah I think they look pretty cool though Revs wise as well, they, uh, it's got a bit more engine noise than usual. Interior, everything, <laughs> just familiar. It's funny, I was even looking there at like the uh, the heating dials and all sorts. Uh, yeah, looking around the mirror, all right, but I don't really pay attention. I can see out the back, I can, so yeah, I can officially look behind me. I've got a mirror that actually, a uh, rear view mirror that's not terrible. Technically, I can just see the top of my tyre there, but again, it's not really much of an issue. I can see enough of the garage door to where I can officially see behind me. And the horn is actually not that bad. Like, that's pretty, yeah, that's fine for a scout. The engine, you'll see, revs pretty quick. So it idles at about 900, and I think it revs up, was it 2100 or so? Oh no, wait, let's go more than that. Um, and it obviously goes there pretty quick. Again, wow, well, it, it can kick the power in pretty quick. You'll see as the video goes, um, certain things I really like about this, and then there's other ways it's not as good. I purposely drifted there, I just wanted to see if I could catch in and roll or if I'd skid, which I'd rather skid and I did, so that's good. Trailer wise, yeah, the four, like, single slot, double slot, uh, prototype radar trailer thing. 
And the fuel trailer, and like I said, with the tyre on the back, it doesn't do anything like stop it or anything. Speed-wise, it ticks up to speed pretty nicely. Once you go in pretty quick, it's the usual sort of snow runner mechanics where it gets a little bit loose and light and everything, which obviously, if, yeah, you want to avoid that, just put a lower, slower gearbox in, but I generally do prefer the highway stuff, and that's what I drive practically every Scout I've ever got, unless I've just tested one with the, uh, the other gearboxes and forgot to remove it or whatever. Going along here with the mud, normally I, well, I start going through here, and you can see, to, to its credit, it's doing fine here. I have to say, going on this map, I was enjoying it more than I possibly did <laughs> later on. Um, but yeah, what I do with the scouts normally, just because that's kind of my point, that if you're going to take a little vehicle and everything, you at least gain the advantage that I can nip down the side of muddy sections and all the rest of it. So the test that I normally do with scouts is can I fit between uh, that telegraph pole and the rock, because again, a truck isn't going to get through there. But there might be a little gap at the side and I can fly through and, yeah, a loaf, scout, etc. Because that's the thing. There's, in this game, to be honest, there's not really much point of scouts. Because it's like anything I can do in a scout, I can pretty much do in a truck. Apart from, yeah, alright, then squeeze through, like, a load of tight trees and that that are blocking the way of it or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I take a goddamn professional wing. But the thing is, even with a loaf, like... I'm always up to something with the loaf <laughs> kind of thing like I well to be fair yeah he's pretty rapid these days to be honest go, see going along roads like this yeah I do go flying around with the loaf but I wouldn't take the loaf to yeah Imandra and then be forced to go two mile an hour in the snow I don't even want to do that in a truck on Imandra let alone oh yeah at that point it's like don't gain anything by having a scout it's not faster than trucks which really it should be when you think about it like the freeway gearbox which is the sort of the equivalent of the high range in trucks if I put this in high gear it's nowhere near as quick as trucks but it's like you kind of I don't know in real life this thing's going to get up to a hundred or whatever on the motorway a truck obviously isn't going up this mountain as well it's doing pretty well it's going here nicely up here as well pulls up there what I do like about it, the weight's definitely very low down. You can tell a lot of scouts I'm able to drive up there, but when I reverse back down here, a lot of them go all wobbly and tip. They don't like it very much. But this is, yeah, weighted very nice and low, and that really isn't an issue. It's pretty smooth to drive around here. It's not as precise as the loaf. <laughs> I'm still, it ain't replacing the loaf. See you there, see how it's starting to drift off to the right. The loaf, he's, uh, he's like German precision engineering when it comes to that. But, yeah, this thing's a little bit... Not crazy, though. It's definitely with, like... It's cool. It's just... Ain't replacing the goddamn horse. And, yeah, you can hear the engine noises are a little bit... A bit fruitier than they normally let us have. Which... I like the sound of them, but I've... Yeah, I've said it before. <laughs> like, they don't... I don't know. It just randomly kind of... Well, not randomly. If you feather the throttle, it just kind of chucks that sound in there. But, yeah, it's kind of... I don't know. Like... Yeah, Sega Mega Drive sort of early 90s road rash <laughs> sound effects almost. See, again, it could, like, it's not bad at all, but you can get the little bit of understeer here and there, nothing crazy. And yeah, overall, I would, like I say, I was enjoying it on this, um, this map. I still... Yeah, overall, there's no point in waiting to the understeer. I don't think it's worth five quid, just because it's suffers from the same thing every scout does in this game, that it's just overly punished on certain terrains, I think, so. Got to the top here, I actually got stuck now, I edit most of it out, but I genuinely, now, I kind of like, yeah, that picnic table thing's propping my back wheels up and I'm stuck on a barrel. In the end, I had to switch to a GMC, I've just got abandoned somewhere and switch back to this, I knew it'd make the barrel and the uh, table disappear, but yeah, I literally couldn't get off there. It's just... Well, in the end, I managed to get this video under 40 minutes, because like I say, it's uh, a certain cargo things and stuff you're not really going to be doing anyway, so I tried to keep the video a bit shorter. But yeah, stuff like that, I'm just literally sitting there trying to unhook myself from a barrel for a minute. But you can see there the weight, like, if it wasn't weighted low, it wouldn't have tried to wiggle around there. And even though I've got an autonomous winch, so I don't need the engine to start, it's nice that it tried to kind of level itself back off better than a lot of things would. The loaf does do that, and uh, there is a few other scouts that do that, but 
yeah, for the most part, that's so that's a good sign. Drop the hammer down here. I, to be honest, I don't know. It just became a thing in the video. After I got to the top of the hill, I just personally like to go flying down here. But in the end, it kind of nice to see out handle. See a loaf. He would have arrived earlier and removed that rock. He knows what he's doing. But I left this bit in because, as you can see, it's actually like pretty respectable. And what I like is more when you go down like that, and it it's almost vertical on its nose. It's quite good at it just stays there or you know or you can drive back to your wheels it's not trying to go arse over tit every five seconds little grip wise could be better though see there it's like pretty comfortably climbing down there don't feel like it's gonna try and do a roll on me or anything so yeah as far as that goes uh looking pretty good this is exactly where it starts it let every scout gets let down by this i mean my loaf is like Spider-Man with his winches. I'll be firing loafs, <laughs> firing loaf, firing winches all over the place, and I'll be through here in a minute with a loaf. But yeah, it's just why. Like, I, I never owned a Jeep, but I'm willing to bet that it goes quicker than this in four inches of snow. And again, this is like, yeah, why, why use scouts in the game when they're just punished on stuff like this? I would already say, like, I. I do actually quite like this Jeep, but it's pretty safe to say I'll be sticking to non-snowy maps. It kind of feels like, to be honest, they've obviously done like factory grounds. It beached here as well, which I was surprised. I honestly thought it wouldn't. I've got the tallest suspension on. Uh, I've got the biggest tyres. I mean, the loaf gets over here and he's got small, smaller tyres than all the rest of it, so... Uh, yeah, not a mate. And I'm surprised there, even when I'm obviously doing the winch, it... Normally, the front tyres with chains have got enough grip on that slippery road. And, uh, yeah, even, like, just little things going along there. Like, I just worth it in the first ten seconds out, because it's just unnecessarily long. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah, you look at the revs. Like, idles at 900. I probably barely get up to 1100 there, so when you're in low range, it gives you 200 RPM above idle. And that's it. And obviously then you can go into auto and get more, but then the diffs are gone and what you gain in RPM you lose in diff cooperation and all the rest of it. So you find a lot of the time it's, yeah, you're like, well, do I sit in diffs or... You may as well, to be honest, because I didn't specifically check, but I bet it uses less fuel in low range than revving like a mad one in auto. But yeah, there's not a lot of gain. And I, by the way, came back with them OJ Simpson tyres, but I didn't realise at this point they were smaller. But this is the thing. Anything except chained on snowy maps. And you're skidding around on roads, ice, you know, all that sort of stuff. So you got to sacrifice it one way or another. But I mean, going along here, to its credit, it gets across. But, you know, I'm not going to rush to grab a Jeep. And drive through snow for for very long. And there is a lot of trucks that ain't don't perform much better here. So, as far as a scout goes, it's one of the better scouts. I still would obviously the loafs definitely first, but uh, the load star I still prefer that. I'm just trying to think the F750. I'd still prefer that, but it's probably not going to be too far behind them sort of thing. So I think they've done a decent job. I don't think it's as terrible as the Apache. Although in snowy maps I feel like it gets a lot closer to the, to the Apache than you would like. Really. I mean even now look it's like yeah grip is a bit of a thing. And again those OJ Simpson tyres are good but they're only in 32s. And I don't have a clue why they've done that to be honest because the Hummer and that has got its own unique tyres, but yeah. I can't think of any of the vehicle off the top of my head that gets unique tyres, but just not in the biggest tyre size. It seems like a last minute nerf that they usually do. It's like, oh no, wait, that's too good with that. Let's remove it. So I'm guessing that's what they did. It seems a bit of an odd thing to add only the smallest size. And they're only off-road tyres, the sort of unique ones. But I gave them a go. I, um... Like I said, I I think they were pretty nice, but I now lose four inches of tyre size, which is at least two inches of ground clearance. 
I couldn't get up here as well. I kept doing a, I put it into low range. And then it didn't have enough RPM, like, it was gripping onto the wall, but didn't have enough RPM to climb it. And then when I put it back in auto, I had enough RPM, but, you know, yeah, now all the wheels are not cooperating at the same time. So, in the end, I had to winch. I did edit some out, but I did sit there for a little while. I gave it its uh, fair chance of cracking it. Certainly not jumping over, like, what was it, the Phoenix? <laughs> did a pretty good job. That just flew over there. Like, scene from Free Willy, that was. Uh, going through here just slowness. <laughs> this is that like at this point I was looking around and I was saying to myself, whatever company makes you know like the seatbelt thing you click it into and it's got the red button, it's like whether you see a Lamborghini or a shit car, they all have the same seatbelt thing that yeah, you click it into. <laughs> so I don't know, I was just randomly thinking to myself, like, whoever makes that, it'd be a pretty good company to own because you're never gonna get any competition here. It's like I don't know, just stuff that no one thinks about, like, you know the, where you put your knives and forks and spoons in those trays in the, like, who the hell makes them? But whoever does, it probably never has any competition, because no one's trying to reinvent a cutlery tray, or whatever the hell it is. It's like, that's the sort of, that's the sort of company you want. <laughs> just go under the radar your entire life. But judging from the amount of seatbelts you see that are identical, whoever owns that company, Probably like Bill Gates or Elon Musk levels of rich. It's just no one's ever heard of him because he only makes a seatbelt. It managed to clear the peak there, but yeah, just a lot of vehicles do this. I put the handbrake on and the tyres are still rolling and it's like... The game isn't even limited by real world physics. Surely it'd be harder to code not locking the tyres solid when I put the handbrake on than just, yeah, saying press this button and the tyres will lock up. But a lot of vehicles do that. They don't... They can't quite handle it. Turning circle in there, I mean, it's a scout, so they it ain't even close, really, to needing to three-point turn in there and that. It's not doing bad with this trailer. This is the thing, though. Along the roads, like, um, you know, we're not really dealing with terrain physics at this point. This is now Grand Theft Auto levels of just solid ground you're driving along. It's skiddier and everything, but it can get a little bit of fishtailing. It's not the worst thing, though, for doing like this, but again, I would only take it if I had to go, say, from that warehouse down to the uh, port on this map, because that's, like, road the entire way. I mean, yeah, it's not flying there, but again, I, there probably has been worse, but that's the thing. I go low-range diffs on, what again in grip, well not grip, but you know what I mean, like yeah, the diffs all working together, etc. I lose an RPM, and that clearly does make a difference in this game, I mean that's why they limit it, but yeah, in a nutshell, I think the biggest thing they've cocked up on this is they've way over restricted it in the low range, and I didn't really notice it as much in when I've been driving it around like the other day. Well, I drove it around like the first day I got it and that did that video on it, but I've not drove it a hell of a lot since then. I probably did a bit in the live stream, but, you know, I'm chatting away and all sorts. Um, you can see now it, just, it couldn't get across it. I had to keep using the winch. I nearly just deleted the entire trailer now. I was thinking about it, but I couldn't move. So instead of just having footage of me winching for a minute, I deleted the cargo just to see, it. like, can I even drive with the empty trailer? It did... But it was very slow and, I don't know, a scout length or two after I just cut it there, I literally stopped, deleted the trailer. It's just, yeah, there's nothing else to be learned there. It's incredibly slow when it's in, I don't know, a snowy map, like mud or which within reason is kind of what they've, yeah, they seem to these days be stricter with the snow than... I'm not sure if they were, you know, as well. I kind of remember when they first said it was SnowRunner, I kind of thought, you know, you know you're onto, you've got a good thing with MudRunner, now you're trying to reinvent the formula, and it's not knocking it, but it's like, that's a risk. If you just did MudRunner 2, you kind of know where you already stand. And again, yeah, respect, you kind of went for it. But I sort of remember when they uh, first had the snow, I was kind of like, oh, cool, it doesn't feel like white mud and they're just that's it that made it look white it was and I there was super snow sections and that's supposed to be snow banks and you get a bit slow but I don't know I kind of feel like 
it wasn't insane. I was looking at well, I, my caravan was bigger, <laughs> but I used to. That's pretty much what I used to live in. But that looks like about I don't know, 25, 30 foot. I think mine was 37 by 12 foot. So a little bit bigger than that, but it's basically what I used to live in. Good times. See a lot of trucks and just clear that. <laughs> Cause I've been here before. Like what? What do you mean environmental concerns? I'm more concerned about my trailer. Fuck a penguin. That's his problem. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it, it sinks when I jumped in. I. It does float basically, but as what happens with a lot of vehicles in this game, if you land in the water sideways, it then doesn't float. So on this section with the mud. It's probably not the worst. Again, it feels just slow to the point. I'm not enjoying myself. Um, I basically got stuck, so I'm going to have to winch these trees to the side. I was able, in the end, to drive down the edge of the map, but you know, I mean, like, I uh, squeezing the throttle and just watching a YouTube video, I, it was one mile an hour, and I don't know, it probably took me like two or three minutes to get to the end there and about another three minutes to get to here. Up in the mountains, though, again, uh, at least up in the mountains, you get the super snow sods off, and you just kind of... There's a bit of snow, but it acts more like solid terrain, really. And again, because it's weighted low, it's, yeah, quite nice up in the mountains. It's certainly not terrible. I lit I was watching a video. <laughs> so I was like, oh, shit. I'll best turn. Started paying attention again, it's yeah, just spent the last six minutes squeezing the throttle waiting to get it really. But yeah, once I'm paying attention, like it gets up there, even as far as doing a nose test, I knew I could go pretty deep. <laughs> That's what I said. Um But yeah, it's like you can see the wheels, particularly if you've got the full size ones, which is why those OJ Simpson tires that are only available smaller, that would now make your tires not quite reach as close to the nose of your vehicle and all sorts, so yeah. But as far as that goes, it's you you be doing well to get your nose caught before your wheels can kind of yeah flick your nose back out of there and keep going. I'm just gonna edit ahead a little bit. It's just yeah, we all we all have lives to live. <laughs> we don't need to watch it. Drive there incredibly slowly. That was a uh, left out there from must have been the Tatra Force review the other day. It was a goddamn horse in the distance. That was cheering me up because about now I was like I probably could fit a sawn off in my mouth. That's not the. That's not what's stopping me <laughs> right now. And again, I mean, it was, yeah. But it ain't bad for tipping. I will credit where it's due. Eventually, uh, got it to go. It's not the cleanest rolling test I've done, but look how solidly it just lands back. Like, if I manage to get it to roll from the top, I'm willing to bet it'd roll twice and end up back on its wheels. 75 to 90 percent of the time and every now and then you'll get unlucky and yeah it'll stay on its roof or its side or whatever so what I mean it's like it's, the vehicle may well be better than what you're seeing it's just I'm not allowed the revs to find out I mean already you look at the uh, rev counter it Start, I think red line was somewhere around five thousand, so say five, five and a half thousand. <laughs> red line's always a bit, bit cautious. Um, yeah, and it's the vehicle already only revs up to say I don't know twenty five hundred or whatever it was then. So you're already missing half. And strictly speaking, they don't even have to add more <laughs> revs. They just have to make the needle move twice as quick and pretend it revs to five. But for whatever reason, they don't. Well, they probably don't because obviously, once they make it rev to five, they then balance the vehicle and go right. Put a rev cap at two and a half. But yeah, when it comes to the low range, they've just they've gone way over the top. I literally get two hundred RPM above idle. I could use the freeway gearbox, and I know I get high low and all that, but I can guarantee you, best case, it's going to let me go to like twelve hundred RPM then. But I'm already in a slower ratio gearbox to begin with, so. What I look, what I gain in one place, I'm going to lose everywhere else. See, mountains, it's uh, pretty good, so I left a little bit of extra footage in for this. Most stuff, the loaf has flown across here and everything, and a few others, but not many. 
a lot of stuff would have rolled by then. You can clear this peak, hence why I didn't put, you know, those sidebars on steps. That's just another thing that I could have, like, beached on in the middle. But yeah, turning around there, did pretty well. So a bit of a mixed bag, apart from the slowness and it's overly punished on the snow and the revs. <laughs> it's a bit, of a bit of a list that's building, but yeah. Apart from that, it was doing all right. This is a. Uh, I tried a few things at the quarry. I went to drive up with this uh, fuel tanker, obviously, and then about now I was like, well, it's a little bit easy. Earlier though, before that, hence why it was edited, I was trying to drag this along, and I brought a two-slot scout trailer with me, which I hate the two-slot scout trailers at the best of times. Hence why I grabbed this. It wasn't exactly flying with either. Hence why I then got a fuel tanker, but then it did pretty alright with a fuel tanker and I didn't really feel like it was enough. Well, yeah, I didn't reach any limit or anything, so I was like, okay, I'll go and get something heavier. So this is it, yeah, well there you go, pulling a, uh, an empty one, there's no point in putting a concrete block in it. One, I'll have to bring a truck down here just to stick the trailer on just to be allowed to put a concrete block in. But it'll just sit there, guaranteed it won't move. Maybe on a flat surface, in a yard and all that, yeah, maybe. But in this quarry, it won't move if I put a concrete slab in there. I'm, I'm going very slow. We're getting there eventually. Um, for comparison, again, I mean, the loaf, goddamn horse, there he is. Uh, yeah, he's dragged the trailer up here. Quicker as well, I might add. <laughs> well, I think in the loaf review, he might have done it with the uh, two-slot scout trailer and a concrete slab, so we kind of had... A bit of a, uh, yeah, the bar was set pretty high for the old loaf. But then in other videos, when I inevitably get bored of reviewing whatever scout I'm doing, and I jump in a loaf, he's pulled these trailers up this hill and everything, like, pretty damn easy, actually. <laughs> pretty respectably so, I have to say. This thing, well, we make it in the end, but, yeah, it's not, you know, it's not blowing me away or anything. It's... See, let's say it let me go to 13, 1400 RPM. It's not that this vehicle can't get up here, it's just that it's not applying... There's a certain amount of friction and it's not applying quick enough rotational force to keep throwing friction at the mountain so I can climb it. It's like it can bleed traction quicker than I can apply it because the revs are too low. And yeah, I can go into auto, revs are higher, now the diffs stop cooperating and the wheel with the least grip bleeds all the power and you're back to square one. It's not going to be faster either way. If anything, you're going to get up, up here in low range with the diffs on. But yeah, if you like, you're listening really quietly. The engine's that quiet, I can hear birds chirping. <laughs> that shouldn't really... When you're trying to climb a mountain like this, I, uh, or quarry hill, whatever. I want to hear a bit more, a bit more effort. Look, eventually we got, got it up there, but I couldn't actually do it that. In the end, I just disconnected the winch. I probably could have sat there steering and all the rest of it, but in my own time or whatever, that's what I'd do. Just disconnect the winch, get onto level ground, reattach the winch, and hoover the trailer up there. So it's pretty much what I did. I didn't break that or anything. I think you know when you kind of feather the throttle a tad and it jumps down the gears a bit enthusiastically quick and tries to put you back in first. I think it did that to me then. So the trailer here yeah, sort of had a chance to catch up. See, so, like there, dropping down, the nose... I'd struggle to go arse over tick because I was joined to the trailer, but... I tried to stop there. See, my loaf wore it like a hat. Because it's just entertaining like that. This didn't manage it. Didn't even have to send in the low folks. The trailer rolled back to its wheels. Yeah, you can see it's it is more comfortable in muddy maps than snow. As far as uh, going along here for the old ice test, you can hear it breaking. I think the rear wheels thought about dipping in then. Not too sure what happened there. It wasn't even an edit. And yeah, bearing in mind, uh, yeah, you don't get like, you know, the big fat custom muds or anything like that on this that you do on, say, the Yar or something. 
Um, to be fair though, he doesn't really need it. I kept driving across uh, the snow, or sorry, the ice quite a bit, and I ended up driving down the river. And it never broke through or anything like that. It's certainly possible it is with practically anything. There might be the odd vehicle that's would be annoyingly difficult to try and break through the ice, but yeah, no issues there. It's just I wouldn't honestly wouldn't really want to bring this to a snowy map. If I had to do something for whatever reason, a scout, I mean maybe this, uh, what's that mission called? Battleground on the ice or whatever it is that's on this map. Maybe could have a go at that. If it's light enough that it can literally just skim across all the snowy sections, you might be able to find a fast route. I just noticed here how much smaller it was than the R, really. I have collapsed the suspension at that point, but other than that, like, you could just, yeah, kind of surprise me as I was driving past, like, bloody hell. Yeah, yeah the R looks a lot heftier. I could, uh, Jeff special it though. Get into I turn the well I turn all-wheel drive off but to be honest I could just special it with all-wheel drive on when I'm on this section with the ice practically everything if it's gonna Jeff special it'll do it on that ice there it's a little bit harder to get it to work on the uh, runway on White Valley quick test though cutting over here for uh, what's this one called again flooded foothills and it's at a point like this kind of does float, but what I do like, it can at least sink enough, you can see there, I even clipped a bit of the uh, snorkel and took two damage, but it's not going to just do what the loaf can do and carry on driving underwater, and what some of the trucks do. It's going to float, sort of, yeah, but at least I'm actually able to go deep enough <laughs> to grip the floor and get, like, some scout, well there's one as an example, I just leave that scout 800 there as bait when they update the game, just to see if it steals it off me or whatever. But some scouts cutting through there, I kind of, when I get near the middle, I just have to float until the current will kind of get me to the other side where I can reach the ground again and drive out of there. Whereas this thing, I would say, just about has enough sinkability that it was, it made its own way over there rather than just praying the current will sort of drift me across. A little bit of snow on, snow? <laughs> snow on that slow? Slow on that snow. Um... To be fair, yeah, that's snow's always been a bit excessive. Going down here, I mean, decent speed, uh, not terrible, quite an high speed to be honest. It's not insane to where you're just skidding around like an erratic mess, but it's starting to approach where it's getting a bit loose, but I sort of quite like that. You can get a bit of drifting and messing around going on. Like I said, I can always stick a uh, the snow runner gearbox in it if I want to just tone things down a little bit. Started getting a tank slapping out, it's not on purpose did just about manage to steer out of it and all the rest of it. It's quite nice. When you hit the engine, you take damage, but I've been flying it off cliffs and all sorts, and, uh, yeah, every time you land on the back, you just rarely take any, like, even suspension or anything. You just kind of bounce off that spare tyre. See, now the front's floating, I reckon. Well, it is. I was, like, my rear wheels, really, were sort of tiptoeing then... Yeah, it's something it wasn't too happy about it. I think I even tip it now by accident, but that's how easy the winch just it got back to its wheels is like shows you for example the R eighty seven would be the opposite of that. Once you roll the R, it's a pain in the arse trying to get back to its wheels. This thing just like exactly like the loaf, in fact, sort of like the loaf did at the end of yesterday's video or whatever, it's like, yeah, attach a winch, and you just flip back to its wheels. See, now, this is like the drowning test. I pretty much can't drown if I wanted to, because I'm now floating to where I can't go any further, but at least, you know when you get a truck that's got a snorkel to the roof and then it starts floating halfway up the tyre, it's like, why did you even offer me an extra snorkel when I can't even drown the stock snorkel but at least this yeah the snorkel is like pretty much where you can get to before it floats so I mean like I just cut across that river and flooded foothills it's enough it's pretty uh, yeah I'm happy with that it's pretty cool because by the time I'm gonna drown it I'm floating so it's not the end of the world 
like, even if I could sink further, I'm going to start wrecking the engine by that point. So well, if I was going to tow it behind a truck, it might start floating then, if you know what I mean. I don't even have to kill the engine. So even there, didn't take uh, damage. Don't get me wrong, I've jumped it and it can take damage doing that, but it's not bad at letting you get away with the, a few of them. <laughs> Another one is unsurprisingly at life. As for here, though, driving up here, it's just slow. Like, it could theoretically go quicker if I was just allowed. This is at the point where I just start zoning out. Why are we still here? So yeah, takes takes a little while. Not gonna lie, a little bit again. Like the grip should be a little bit better there. I mean the chain, which I just I know from other scouts coming up here, like they don't skid around necessarily quite as much there. It just either they've dialed everything back a few percent, five percent, whatever, or they've dialed something up. Just feels a little bit off the baseline that it used to be, but it's still enough. I eventually get up here. It's not anything crazy. Just jiggle the tires a little bit. So it's not, uh, yeah, it's not rotate it off or anything like that. Made it to the top of here. Turn around, there's no point in going down the other side because one million percent is not going to kill the giant tree that 95% of trucks <laughs> can't even kill. You see now, like, look, that's reverse, diffs on, and I'm going like half a mile an hour because of what, a few inches of snow? It's just overkill. That's a nice little jump there. See, it's... It could have just, you know, I could have tipped there, but you can see it's pretty decent at not tipping. That was kind of 75% vehicle, you know, there was a bit of luck there. I, I could have easily landed differently and gone for a roll, but the fact that it had a chance of resisting it... And yeah, I mean, that's about it. It's I actually do quite like it. I still don't think it is worth five quid. It doesn't bring anything new to the table that other stuff done. It is overall quite a nicely balanced. I do like that it's got a bit of decent speed and all the rest of it. They've put the bigger engine and all that. There's just, yeah, why have I not got the big OJ Simpson tyres and like why are the revs so insanely capped? And the roof rack and that, it's not bad but it's half the size of say the Lose. It's got 150 points, four tyres and I think 40 or 60 fuel. Um, yeah, the Lose obviously double that apart from the tyres. Uh, there it is though, money wise by the way, fully upgraded 40 grand, which ain't that bad, that's again about the same as a loaf say for example. Um, this is what, 21 is it? Sorry, it shrinks the screen, the other one's like 13. There's a little description there, it's just a millennium updated version of the other one really, and overall I do think this is a better one, but yeah, if you're not sure, just, it ain't bringing anything new, drive the hum around and if, you know, the loaf's goddamn horse, so that's kind of what I think in the end, but if you've got it, there's not buyer's remorse like there was with the Apache. But yeah, anyway, that's about it for today though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf and I'll be back soon.